Well, I'll give you an example with a book that I'm working on now. That, uh, it's set in the 15th century in England. And um, there's a boy in the story who, in the sort of climactic moments of the book, is brought before the king of England, who at that moment, in a very crucial way, is Henry the seventh, who had deposed Richard the third and then would become the father of Henry the eighth. Anyway, it's a tense situation. The boy is pretty sure he's not going to come out of this room alive. And he's sitting, he's standing, or he's bowing, he's on his knees in front of this king who's staring at him. Well, if he's staring at him, what color are his eyes? How do I find out the color of Henry the Seventh's eyes? And does it matter? I could have made up anything. But for me as a writer, it's extremely important to get as close to the facts as I can. In a curious way, it makes my writing easier it absolutely makes it more confident, and I have the sense that I'm expressing something that comes out of some place in reality. Well, this is not very difficult. I, I was a librarian for many years. Research is, act I used to teach in a college students how to do research, freshman students how to do research. Research is not very difficult. Uh, and let me hasten to say I do not use the internet because it's a lot of rubbish. But uh, there are ways, and uh, actually I, I'm happy to teach anyone how to do research. So in this case, I tracked down uh, really uh, full biographies of Henry the Seventh, And sure enough, there's a description. He was X tall. He was uh, high cheekbones, slightly reddish hair, and he has blue eyes. So bingo. It's just a word, it's a phrase. His intense blue eyes were on me. But somehow I think it instills me with a confidence to state that as a force of logic and narrative. And I think that communicates to the reader. Another example, I wrote a book called Iron Thunder, which is a story about the battle between the Merrimack and the Monitor, the first time ships of iron fought, and they did so in the Civil War. And um, it's an extraordinary story. Not, this is not of my invention. I'm simply telling what happened. But uh, I went to do some research at a wonderful museum in Virginia uh, called the Mariner's Museum. And they let me uh, get to the author, uh, to the uh, captain's log and letters. And I was reading um, some letters. I mean, he's with the actual letters. He was a uh, guy at the bottom of the ship on the, on the monitor, uh, which is the uh, Union ship. And he's a fireman, which is to say uh, he's simply shoveling coal into the furnace. Okay. In this battle, before the battle, no one knew what was going to happen. This had never happened before. And the day after, you know, what, what was going to happen when shells, cannonballs, <coughs> strike these iron ships? Would they splinter? Would they sink? <coughs> and so here I turn this page, and this kid says, Dear Mom, I'm okay. It was as if they were shooting spitballs at us. And I said, whoa, what a great thing in the context of writing for kids. <coughs> and that's in the book. <laughs>